Jesuit and Holy Cross face off for the 100th time tonight at Tad Gormley. Plus, would East St. John or Hanville go to 2-0 in District 75A? And Easton and Landry Walker are both looking to bounce back after slow starts. That and much more tonight on 4th Down Friday. From Channel 4, this is 4th Down Friday, presented by your Southern Quality Ford dealers. We'll start at Pan Am Stadium, the top ranked team in Class 5A, John Curtis, welcoming in the Lake Placid Dragons from Florida. And Lake Placid, good luck defending the Veer. Shane Goins breaks off a big run in the first quarter. He gets stopped at the two, but does finish off the drive with a short touchdown run, 7-0 Patriots. After a Lake Placid touchdown, Goins fielding the ensuing kickoff, gets a nice wall, bounces it outside, and he's off to the races 83 yards later. Curtis is on the board with another six. They led 22-14 after one, and then put it on Lake Placid in the second quarter. Ronald Poole from a couple yards out. The Pats score 29 unanswered points in the second quarter to take a 51-14 lead at the break of the Patriots dispatch the Dragons tonight 61 14 the final. We'll be through the midway point of the prep football regular season after tonight. Man, it is flying by. What up? Welcome to Fort Down Friday. I'm Ricardo Lacombe. We're ramping up district play and two long standing rivals in the Catholic League reach a milestone tonight in our game of the week. Jesuit and Holy Cross hold the longest current rivalry series in the metro area as the Blue Jays and Tigers tangle for the 100th time on the gridiron tonight. Andrew Doe got a front row seat for a very good one at Tad Gormley Stadium, and he has much more live from City Park. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Ricardo. Yeah, Jesuit and Holy Cross reached the century mark in their series tonight. We apologize for all the noise. There's actually fireworks going on just as this game wrapped up. They call this the Great American Rivalry, and it lived up to the billing tonight. Jesuit and Holy Cross meeting for the 100th time tonight at Tad Gormley Stadium, and Jesuit, who was coming in as the underdog, was the one to strike first blood. Blue Jays quarterback Grant Jordan was 3 for 3 for 50 yards passing, and this touchdown toss on this drive alone to Luke LaForge, a 63-yard scoring drive, and it was 7-zip Jesuit. Then later in the half, these two would link up for plenty of first downs and a touchdown to cap off another drive to make it 14-0 Blue Jays. But under 15 seconds left in the first half, and this was a head scratcher. Coach Guy Lecompte for Holy Cross calls a run with Amiri Franklin with one timeout. Instead of taking a shot at the end zone, Franklin is tackled at the 12. They burn their final timeout, and then they miss a 29-yard kick. Just bad clock management, and Jesuit goes into the break with a 14-0 lead. And due to time constraints, we're having to do these second half highlights live. We apologize for the fireworks in the background. Second half, though, Holy Cross came out of the gates hot. John Dave Wooten hit number 13, Alondre Wells for the five-yard score. Tigers cut the deficit to five. Then Jesuits number 28, a 42-yard try for this field goal. No good on fourth and four, but on the other side, Jesuit, their quarterback, uh, Grant Jordan, was killing him on the ground, a 30-yard rush. He had 67 yards on the ground, their final scoring drive, and he finished it off with this five-yard extra effort touchdown. Look at this. Was he down at the one? Did he fumble? The refs say no, Jordan is in, and Jesuit goes on top 20-14. to 14. Final chance for Holy Cross, but Wooten is sacked and stripped by Max Jubinville, and Jesuit wins this game 20-14. to 14. So depending on who you ask throughout the Jesuit community, some might say that they are now leading this series uh, 59 wins to just 40 by Holy Cross and one tie. But officially, according to the LHSAA, they, they now move to 58 wins in this series to 40 by Holy Cross and one tie in a heck of a game tonight. Here from Tad Gormley Stadium, Andrew Doak, fourth down Friday. Ricardo. They can debate the wins, but Jesuit getting the W tonight. All right, thank you, Andrew. Another Catholic League rivalry game. St. Og and Brother Martin hooking up at Yulman Stadium. The Crusaders broke a two-game losing streak to the Purple Knights in the series last year. Tied at seven in the third quarter. Jalen Spears, 53-yard rumble, but the St. Og D would hold the Saders to a field goal. Jack Landry is up and it's good to give Brother Martin a 10-7 lead. Purple Knights now on offense, but that Brother Martin defense has been so good this season. Luke Schecksneider comes up with the interception. Crusaders in business in St. Aug territory, and then Spears would cash in as he takes this handoff. 
and races into pay dirt to extend the Satyrs' lead to 17-7. Brother Martin, too much for the Purple Knights tonight. 27-7 the final. Crusaders improved to 5-0 on the year. Hanville kept its undefeated record intact last week thanks to a thrilling come-from-behind win over Terrebonne. The 4-0 Tigers looking for a 2-0 start in District 7-5A with a win over East St. John tonight. The Wildcats open district play with a dominating win over HL Bourgeois, dropping a very nice 69 on the Braves. ESJ also looking to improve the 2-0 in 7-5A, but points tough to come by for the Wildcats tonight. Adonis Frilo with the tackle in the backfield He's going to be playing D1 ball next year. Meanwhile, Hanville keeping it on the ground early, riding its bell cow. Darrell Evans right up the middle for 14 and the touchdown 10th rushing TD on the year and a 7-0 Hanville lead. Evan fi Evans finds the end zone again in the second quarter. This one from 10 yards out. His 11th rushing TD now and a 14-zip Tigers advantage. ESJ's offense couldn't get on the scoreboard against a very stout Tigers defense. Fourth quarter, Syri Lewis skies for the interception. Three picks tonight for the Hanville D, including a pick six. Tigers pitched a shutout, 21-0 over ESJ. They moved to 2-0 in District 7-5A. Another District 7-5A game brought to us by our friends at VSN Louisiana, Terrebonne at Thibodeau. And Thibodeau 4-0 for the first time since 2014 off to a fast start. Luke Alamont to Markel Price. He does the rest. 27-yard catch and run for the score. Thibodeau scored the first two touchdowns. Terrebo would score the next three to take a 21-14 lead. Ryan Williams slings at the Florida State commit. Chakai Douglas, 11-yard score. Game now tied at 21 in the third. Thibodeau on the march. Ramon Thompson gets the edge, scores. Thibodeau retakes the lead 28-21. Thibodeau trying to go up two scores late in the third quarter, but Tara Bones, D, uh, Dijon Scott steps in front of the pass, uh, weaves his way through the LSU-inspired jerseys, and scores a 47-yard pick six. So the game now tied at 28, late fourth. Alamon and Price hook up again, this time at the back of the end zone for 14 yards out, and that's the game winner. Thibodeau remains undefeated, outlasting Terrebonne, 35-28. Coming up, we'll head to Berman, where both Landry Walker and Easton have had uncharacteristically slow starts in 2019. We'll show you which team got back in the win column. And Eric travels to Chalmette to take on the Owls. But first, some scores from around the metro area.